Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be giving you a preview of the new sprite tag feature for Text Mesh Pro which will enable users to insert graphic elements like these in line with the text. Now the objective of the video is obviously to show you this uh, new feature but it's to also get your feedback on the current uh, direction slash implementation of the feature. Uh, let's disable these current objects so we can take a look at a simpler uh, example and describe how this is all done. So I've got here a text mesh pro object and to this text mesh pro object you're going to be adding a new component. Uh, right now it's called inline graphic manager but I'll probably give it a new name and as you add this new component you're going to assign to it a sprite asset. Now what is a sprite asset? Now a sprite asset is essentially the same thing as a font asset. And when you think about it, a font asset contains an atlas that contains all the different characters and it also contains a list of where all those characters are inside the atlas. The sprite asset is the same thing. It contains an atlas or texture that has all the different sprites in it and it contains a list of where all those sprites are located. Now how do you create this uh, font asset? You'll essentially pick a sprite sheet done in Unity. So if I click the one that I'm going to be using and click Sprite Editor, these are the sprites that we're using. And you're going to be right clicking on it. You'll go Create. Um, and now it's going to be partially blocked outside the screen, but you'll pick and create a Text Mesh Pro sprite asset and that will create it automatically. Now right now it doesn't have an editor and I'll come back to the thing so we can take a look at it to describe some of the features and functionality. Uh, but once you have that spread asset created, you'll simply assign it to this new component. Now when you add this component, it's going to automatically add a child to the text mesh pro object. Now why do we need a child? Now this child will basically contain a mesh that holds all the different graphic elements contained within the text. So the text mesh pro object will have a mesh that contains all the letters and the child will have a mesh that contains all the graphic elements. So if you have 17 sprites in it, then you're going to have one child that has a bunch of sprites in it or 17 uh, quads or you know a bunch of triangles to make that up. Now, why do we need a child? In Unity, there's basically uh, two different renderers that in terms of text mesh row that we're dealing with. First one is the old and trusted uh, mesh renderer which we've been using for years and with the mesh renderer it's actually possible to have multiple materials um, as well as triangle index where you can have multiple materials per mesh. Now with the new canvas renderer we can only have one material per canvas renderer which means we can't mix letters with graphics all within the same mesh because we're restricted to one material. So because of that limitation with the new canvas renderer, we're having to add a child that will contain all of our additional elements. Hopefully this makes sense and it wasn't too overly technical, but that's basically why we need a child. Now let's add our sprites. So we have add, we'll type the word, we'll type it correctly, sprite equal nine. So now adds our sprite, add sprite in line with uh, your, actually let's go instead of with, we'll add a sprite here, sprite equal uh, zero with your text. Now, there's a benefit in, in terms of, I guess before I describe the benefit, the way this is all done is the layout of the characters and the graphic elements is still all done by the text mesh pro component. There's a benefit to this, which is since the layout is done by the text mesh pro component, as far as it's concerned, these graphic elements are characters, which means word wrapping and all the different text control features will affect these graphic elements the same way they would affect a letter. So for instance, if I was to play with character spacing, you can see that they behave as if they were a letter. If I was to pick italic, you'll see that they'll get slanted as if they were a letter. Essentially, they're treated like a letter and they're affected by all the different attributes. So when it comes to alignment, they'll be aligned the same way that text would be aligned. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Cool. Now, in terms of their, um, um, actually before I go there, in terms of their positioning and sizing, I wanna go over a couple things. Since they're considered a letter, 
again, they're all affected by the same attribute. So for instance, if I go here and I use the size tag, size equal, uh, we'll use the percentage version and say 150% and go back here after the sprite and I say, whoops, uh, actually I did it right, slash sprite and let's pick the second one and say size equal percentage 60 and go after it and go slash size you can see that we made this guy bigger and we made this guy much smaller so again because they're essentially considered a letter all the different tags that affect characters will affect these graphic elements so this little 60 guy let's put it at 80 uh, let's go um, you know 90 so you'll be able to adjust them the same way you would adjust letters so one oops that's a thousand two hundred fifty slightly too big but you're gonna be able to control their size this way now in terms of alignment um, inside this region and their sizing so right now the size is done as follows and actually let me show if I change the point size, they will scale proportionally with the text, which is really important. But their size relative to the text, obviously when you create your uh, sprite asset, these graphic elements will have all kinds of different resolutions. So how do we size them appropriately? So right now, TextMesh Pro is going to look at what's the line height of the text uh, used for the font so the impact font if I select it as a font asset and I go here it says it has a line height with which is 87 so it will basically scale the height of each sprite to match this height and then it will keep the aspect ratio and scale the width to make sure it matches so if I bring this guy because right now I've got a size modifier and I put the size back to 100 imagine that uh, and in terms of size sorry I, I misled you um, go back to the asset it's not using the line height uh, that's what I was using I just made a change it's using the ascender so imagine that its height it will be as high as the tallest letter that's defined in the TTF and and its alignment will be the base will be at the baseline of the text all the way to the top of the ascender and that's how they're sized so regardless of their size in pixels inside the font asset they will always be scaled to match the height of the ascender now you can obviously as I showed with the, sp uh, the size tag you can change that and make them bigger or smaller and you have control over that then the next thing is vertical alignment horizontal alignment is pretty simple right because we can use uh, spaces we can also use the position tag so we have different ways to move them left and right but in terms of up and down there's no current tag to do that so there's two ways to I guess that I consider doing it first one is we're gonna go back to our sprite asset and we're gonna take a look at when I created uh, this sprite asset and we'll open up the sprite editor now there's two things two ways I could do it right now when I created and I slice this I put the pivot in the bottom left corner so we could actually use the pivot to the uh, that's not what I want to do I'm trying to just pick the pivot here come on mr. pivot be nice to me no I can't uh, let me move it to the center real quick uh, center so one way that we could do it is we could do it by moving the pivot so if, if the pivot was here we could make it so that the baseline of the text would be here so that this graphic element would always be aligned at the baseline um, so if it's always in the bottom left corner then it would be drawn at the baseline going up now the problem with using the pivot that I ran into is most often you don't want the pivot to be dead center you may want it like maybe at 15 or 20 percent in and if you have a sprite sheet with like you know 47 of these graphic elements um, right now there's no way to pick if I go to pivot there's no way to pick a custom pivot so you'd have to manually adjust each of them 
and then once you've done that you have to go back to the text and take a look let me revert that you'd have to go back to the text and take a look at it and go oh, I kind of got it wrong I want to tweak it a little bit so it would get kind of messy um, so the other way that I thought we should do it is if you're familiar with text mesh pro kerning uh, if I pick a font asset uh, da -da -da -da, go back to my font asset uh, go back here go to the kerning table let's see what we've got actually let's go back real quick enable kerning uh, go back to the font asset I apologize for the uh, delays here let's add uh, let's see what we got let's add just for the sake of this demo uh, kerning between the W and the I so if I go W and I and add a kerning pair now I can dynamically as you can see here on screen adjust the kerning right so my thoughts are let's do the same thing for the sprites but with the vertical so you're gonna be able to what I'm thinking is you'll pick the font asset you're gonna go to the font asset which right now um, doesn't have an editor but it will have an editor and in this font asset you're going to be able to font asset in this sprite asset you're going to see each of the sprites the same way you see each of the glyphs and let me show that again uh, just in case you don't remember that part in text mesh pro so the glyph info is information about each character contained in the font asset imagine that you're going to see the same information for each of the sprites which is where they're located within the atlas and so on and so forth and with that information there's going to be one extra parameter if I go back and select the thing there's going to be one extra parameter that will allow you to adjust their vertical alignment individually so my idea is you're gonna basically lay those within the text and then um, as you watch them going oh you know I want this mousse or whatever thing to be a little bit lower you're gonna drag it and it you're gonna move it up and down and adjust it and once that's done this alignment will be relative to the baseline which means as you switch fonts for example if I switch fonts from Arial you can see that the baseline is still baseline baseline for bangers is still the same place so the baseline is a constant for all the fonts so this adjustment will work for pretty much all the fonts unless the font designer whoever designed the TTF or the, uh, the open type font uh, decided to move the baseline in some other weird position and I've seen that happen with like a script like uh, fonts but for pretty much all the fonts that's gonna be fine um, so that's I oh um, I, I guess that's kind of it in terms of the big overview of how this feature is gonna work but uh, a quick thing I wanted to show let's go back to this guy here um, because it's a child and I'm actually the child component is actually using the unity 4.6 stuff if you look at this button it actually has a masking component attached to it so if I pick this uh, text mesh pro object or the parent and not choose scaling and I move this up you can see that masking uh, is basically going to work for the sprites as well as for the text itself um, so in the end uh, you know this started out with mostly like a proof of concept but ultimately it, it's feeling pretty good already there's some issues that I have to work with you know this is the first implementation um, but I think it's going to work out pretty good as a quick teaser and hint hint um, once I can weave in sprites well I can start weaving in different fonts within the same text object so this will actually pave the way to not only be able to mix and match text with graphics but you're ultimately uh, going to be able to mix and match different fonts within the same block of text as well as graphics the the rule or the caveat will be that for each separate font asset that's going to be used you're going to have like a separate child that holds the mesh for each of the different font assets that you're using so this is basically it for this preview hopefully it wasn't too long and hopefully it made sense it's about 3 a.m. right now on uh, I guess uh, Christmas Day so I'm uh, uh, somewhat uh, lacking in focus a bit I've had to restart this video a bunch of times so hopefully this was good and made sense hopefully you enjoyed it I would really love to get your feedback so thank you for watching and thank you for uh, using text mesh pro